Good morning, and welcome to another Monday Live. And uh, exciting it is, just come back from Denham Grove. Did uh, the full weekend there, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And uh, we had a lovely time. Uh, came back to listen to a bit of golf. Uh, you know, obviously dreaming that a Northern Irishman might win it, but uh, that didn't happen. Sorry if you're not a golfer. But um, um, what's going on? Well, we are talking defence. Still defence on the site, tough. It's a, uh, obviously a tough topic, always is. We're going to be looking at, uh, in the seminar, we're going to be looking at uh, the opening leader, after the opening leader. So, uh, you know, how does he... Um, how does uh, he think about switching, etc.? A little bit tougher, a little bit tougher. And, uh, well, I mentioned it on Friday, we're talking about burst bubbles. Burst bubbles, yes. The cruises have been operating with bubbles, so you've had to operate in groups of just six people, etc., whereas they have burst them. Isn't that good news? Yeah, no, it is great news. I feel able to promote cruises with a vengeance now because we are able to operate duplicate bridge. Woo! So we can play bridge and do our seminars and things like that on, on board. So that is exciting. So um, the first one I'm doing in May is uh, is going to Scandinavia. It was, of course, as you know, going to St. Petersburg, but we're not going there. We're going to the uh, blue and yellow of Sweden. So we've got a nice party on there. But there's so many cruises for you to choose from. So I do ask you to go to uh, to the um, the holiday site there. Let me, I think Helen might even have, um, there you go. She's got the, the slide she's created for the one that I'm going on. Um, but there are lots of, lots of cruises for you to choose from. Um, I'm trying to think, you can go to America, you can go to the Northern Lights, uh, you know, and I, I think I'm going to Germany. No, so lots of interesting ones, and I do recommend having a little peek on our website there. And at the same time, we've got lots and lots of events as well. Um, we are um, trying to, hopefully there'll be a few in Worthing, a few in Bournemouth, um, and uh, we're hoping to get to Swindon as well. Some of you will recognise those venues of, of, of previous versions. So it's still sort of using the venues we had in the past with Bernard McGee and Mr Bridge, etc. Uh, and then hopefully really trying to find some new ones. Um, you know, um, Rini suggesting County Down. That wouldn't be a bad idea. Yeah, I, I, think, I think we should try and get there eventually. I've said that a long time, though. I, I know the Northern Ireland t contingent know I've... Uh, uh, I've been threatening to go there for a long time. We'll get there eventually, certainly to the Irish Peninsula. Um, got a little thing to say about the York Bridge Club. I got a nice email from uh, David, and uh, York Bridge Club is setting uh, setting up. They've got a brand new clubhouse, state of the art clubhouse, and they're looking to promote for beginners and all sorts. So, so I'm, I'm wishing Stuart K some good luck. And, uh, and I think throughout May, they've got lots of open days. So if you are in that area, the York Bridge Club, you can look it up online and um, certainly on their bridge website. Uh, and it looks quite exciting. So uh, if you are in that room, I hope they have some success and some fun. I know that's the, that's the part of the world that uh, Pete, Pete Ackle, as, it, Peter Ackle, as you know him, who plays with us is from as well. So, um, or as, uh, has played at before. So lots of things going on. Uh, we're going to have our uh, blind hand. We're going to have our blind hand. And we're going to say hello to Jen. Hi, Jen. Um, over uh, in Australia there. I hope, hope you are well. Um, nice to hear from you. And uh, we've got our blind hand. We've got a bidding quiz at the end. And, of course, we'll have the beginners. The beginners at the very end as well. OK, one last thing, though, we're not live next Monday for those members. Of course, we are live. We are going to be live on the Friday, on the Good Friday, but we're not live on Easter Monday. So we are having the bank holiday off to run around with Alfie, uh, assuming the weather's good. OK, so we usually start with that blind hand. So let's go to that. So what does a blind hand mean? It means we are going to hear an auction and we have to work out what we think they have. So this one's a little long, so we'll see how we get on. It goes one no chomp from south, two clubs from north, two spades from south, three hearts from north, four clubs, 
Four no trumps. Five spades. Six spades. So there you go. That's your auction to have a think about. See if you can make your way through it and predict what you might expect. Um, there's a couple of things that might be different. They are playing key card blackwood, I'll tell you. You can always ask if you are asking. Okay, so it's quite an interesting auction. We'll learn something from it because some of you might not be familiar with one of the bids, but one of the bids should prompt something strange to you. You know, you should think, oh, that's odd. Um, so we will look at that um, after we've had our seminar. So let's go over, we're looking at switches. So of course, basically what we do is on the Mondays is we look at the topic that's covered on the site. So you've got your big seminar as it were on better switches. So, and we'll, we'll look at one of the switches that, that's shown in that and then look a little bit further. Okay, a little bit further. So let me go to the seminar and let's see how we get on. So, what we said, as a defender, by far the most important part of any hand you play is dummy. Dummy generally is going to tell you what to do. I cannot exaggerate that enough. That's why I've made it bigger, as it were. Okay, because that is what the focus is on. Sometimes a signal might help or, or something like that, but most of the time, dummy tells you what to do. And, <clears throat> and what we've got is a little ditty to try and help us. And that d ditty is this, it's if dummy's on your left, lead through heft. If dummy is on your right, lead the weakest suit in sight. So a tiny bit of poetry for you there. And obviously we're getting desperate with w words that rhyme with left, but heft is from hefty. Now we're going to look at being on dummy on the left. Basically, if dummy's on your left, it means you have led. Okay. Okay. So if dummy is on your left, it means you've led, and then you see dummy later. Okay. So against dummy. So once you've seen dummy, you've made your lead. It's a little bit tricky, and that's what we're going to focus on today. When dummy's on your right. When dummy is on your right, actually, it's pretty straightforward. You're looking for a really weak suit, or we said maybe the ace as well, but, but lots of low cards, none of those tens and jacks and queens. Okay, so that's crucial. But on the left, oh, when dummy's on your left, it's a little bit trickier. Let me show you what I mean. So when dummy's on your left, your ambition is to lead through a card that your partner can beat. You want to lead through strength. Because if, if, if you lead a weak suit in dummy, of course your partner ends up having to play a high card before the next hand. Can you see that? So obviously we'd love to, I mean, if the queen is in dummy, we'd love to lead through the queen and then our partner can maybe beat the queen with his king. And that means we're leading the cards in the right way. Okay, however, there is one proviso which is rather important and it's this annoying word frozen suits or phrase frozen suits and that is when everybody has one honor okay when the honors are shared around the table it's not so simple because even though we might have an honor to lead through if we're leading through our, from our own honour, we lose power. So when you lead away from an honour by itself, so let's say jack to three, you're, it, it, it's a negative thing. You're, you're taking away from the power of that jack. Different if you've got jack 10, nine. If you've got jack 10, nine, beautiful. Leading away from an honour by itself is tricky. Okay, so yeah, I mean, when dummy's on your left, it's a much less precise science, okay? When dummy's on your right, it's much more precise, okay? Because when dummy's on your right, if there's nothing there, you know that if you lead it, whatever dummy's got, you can beat, okay? So let's look at some examples. So we've got the green bays there as the center of the table. We're gonna look at two examples here. This is the one from the main seminar, um, which is a, a standard kind of setup, but it's very, very important. So I'll repeat it here 
because I want to contrast it with a very similar hand, okay, which you will not have seen in the seminar. So in the, in the main seminar on the site, what we were doing is the precise dummy on your left, lead through heft, dummy on your right, weaker suit in sight. Okay, so let's have a look. So the auction was nice and straightforward. It went one no trump, okay, and then three no trumps. Okay, lovely, nice and simple auction. Okay, yes, north is flat. And as you know, I'd, I'd often like to take a full point off there, but with 13 points, generally, you tend to, tend to bag it out, okay? You will find that sometimes you will go off because it is so flat, okay? So one no trump, three no trumps. Jack of hearts lead, I hope you're happy with that. I mean, you, you, you almost know that you're, when you're on lead against one of my set hands because I will give you a solid sequence. Jack, 10, 9, 8. So at this point you start to plan, dummy comes down. And when I'm, whenever I'm planning, I'm looking at all of the suits and seeing how I feel about them, okay? The heart lead, we will discover how good the lead is in a moment. If our partner's got the ace, our partner will kill the king with the ace. If partner hasn't got the ace, well then we know that declarer has started with the ace, king, queen. <clears throat> Which is not a disaster. Do ne never think that leading a suit that the opponents have the ace, king, queen is a disaster because they're always going to make them. You haven't given anything away, and that's one of your ambitions. Okay, but there are a lot of questions to answer. So we're going to look at each suit. So I'll let you see, um, sorry, I'll let you see that for a little bit longer. There, I took that. Okay, so when you see dummy, hopefully your partner's thinking about it, you get the chance to think about it as well. So use that time. Don't fill in a scorecard, don't fiddle around. Use the time to look at dummy. How do you feel about spades? How do you feel about diamonds? How do you feel about clubs? So dummy is on your left. You're looking to lead through beatable heft, okay? However, as I've added, be wary of leading from individual honors. Now, the first thing is clubs are not a good suit to lead because there is no beatable card there. Remember, your partner can't beat the ace. So not only are you leading away from your queen, king, sorry, you would be not giving your partner the chance to kill anything. Does that make sense? Okay, so I don't like clubs and spades leading away from an ace. Okay, so it's, both of those suits could be frozen. Just a reminder of the definition of frozen. One honor in each suit. Now you don't know what your partner's holding is. So if partner has the queen jack 10 of clubs, of course a club lead will work out well. But if, there's one on in your hand and one on in dummy. You've got to be careful. However, diamonds look good, don't they? So let's just check how the lead is. The lead went jack, king, and small, small. So we're thinking it's not exactly brilliant. There's no damage done, but it's not a great success either. Okay. So what about the other suits? Is there an obvious switch? Okay. And to me, yes, diamonds look good. Diamonds has a beatable card in dummy. And the key here is if your partner has the ace of diamonds, it would be great if you could lead through the king. And if declarer has the ace of diamonds, well, he's always making his ace and king, okay? So a diamond lead looks good. I don't think we're gonna give much away. Notice the 10 and nine holding is rather pleasant. Okay, gives it a little bit more strength. You're hoping your partner has one one card. So yes, to me, the answer is diamonds look like an obvious switch, so I'm going to switch to them. And one of the things you should always contemplate if you're thinking about switching, okay? So we'll just see how the place carries on. So Declare plays the jack of spades, and we decide to duck to see how things are going. And then he plays another one to the king. And at this point, knowing that Declarer will have plenty of strength in his hand, it seems reasonable to take the ace. We're expecting Declarer's got the Queen of Spades as well, but he's got plenty of entries to his hand. There's no real, real reason to duck again. So what now? I'm going to lead a diamond. If partner's got good diamonds, it's a great switch. If he hasn't, it doesn't really matter because Declarer's going to make... So if Declarer's got ace, queen of diamonds, he's got ace, king, queen. I'm nothing I can do about it. One thing to contemplate, look at your hand, your king of clubs is underneath the ace. 
So by that I mean you can't necessarily make a trick with that king. If de Clara waits with his ace until you play the king, he kills it. So you may not get the lead again. And whenever you think you might not get the lead again, it's worth leading the 10 of diamonds rather than the two here. And particularly because you've got 10 and nine, okay? Because you've got the 10 and nine. Because it means you can retain the suit because sometimes your partner might hold something like ace, queen, jack to four diamonds, okay? And if he does, if you lead the two, your partner would win that the first diamond trick. Whereas if you lead the 10, you retain the lead and can lead them again. Okay, so I'm gonna to switch to the 10 there, promising the nine. Well, I suppose I could have a double done but... Okay, well, obviously I've set the hand so I can make it as good as I want. And, and this time your partner does indeed have the ace, queen, jack of diamonds. So your 10 of diamonds is a dynamic switch. Again, though, I think your partner is telling, sorry, your dummy is telling you to lead it. Okay, 10 of diamonds, nothing to Clara can do. If he ducks, the 10 of diamonds holds the trick. If he covers with the king, then your partner has four diamond tricks. Ace, queen, jack, and five. And that takes the contract down. So there's the full layout. And the key is, as we saw last week when we were talking about sitting in the right hand seat, okay? It's so important that the right player leads the right suit. Okay, here, a club lead away from the king is nasty, isn't it? If you lead a small club, De Clara can put the nine in, it goes 10 and jack, and De Clara can carry on finessing and can make the whole suit, okay? If he leads them himself, he will lose a trick. So the king and the 10 are separate in your hands, doesn't work out well, okay? You could carry on leading hearts here, okay? And, and you, might, you might still um, scrape the contract off, but here the Ten of Diamonds looks the right play. It looks the right play. Okay, so let's see how things go. If I change things slightly. So it's very similar, obviously. Okay, and we'll have the same auction. You might recognize the dummy even. Okay, because <laughs> so it goes one no trump, three no trumps. Again, and it's, it's your lead, and we're not gonna spoil the hand by leading anything other than the Jack of Hearts. So the Jack of Hearts is led again. Again, it goes the king. What are you thinking? What are you thinking? Okay, so now I've got you, so this, so this one's a, a, a hand that wasn't in the seminar. Uh, on the site, it's a brand new hand, and you've got to contemplate what to do. So you get the same news, okay? The, the, same, the first hand is exactly the same, first trick. But the important thing is to go through the dummy. And what is interesting here is that you've got one honor in each suit, and dummy has one honor in each suit. I'm, t I'm, I'm talking about not hearts here, apologies. Outside hearts. So the key here is if you are forced, so if, if someone came and put a gun to your head and said, you must not lead hearts next time. So if I was forced to switch, I would, I would choose diamonds. But of course you're not forced to switch. And as a number of people have said, it's this safety aspect, okay? The safety aspect. Hearts are safe. Yes, the opponent's gonna make the ace, king, queen of hearts, but we're not giving anything away, and that can be so important. Now, defending at rubber bridge or teams of four bridges are different matter. Sometimes you might think here, do you know, to get this contract down, I think we might need to make a suit. So you might get a bit desperate and switch to diamonds. But playing standard bridge, playing pairs bridge, if your partner, there'll be the odd time your partner is sitting there with ace, queen, ten to four diamonds, a bit like we've just seen. And then, obviously, you, you may well be required to switch diamonds, but I don't think you can do it here. For me, I think what you've got to do is stay passive. You're worried about there being a frozen suit, and we'll see the diamond suit in a moment. 
So what you're going to do is you're going to let the king win, obviously, and the plan is, well, let's look at the full hand. So the play would go the same. The jack of hearts is one in dummy and de Clara plays a couple of spades. Maybe you'd even, you know, let him play three spades and hopefully your partner gives you a message. So the diamond suit is the best suit for you to lead. Okay, the best suit for you to lead, but the problem is because there's one on it in each suit, it's very subtle, but if you lead a diamond, it goes small from dummy, and your partner has to waste his 10, okay? And if he puts the 10 in, De Clara can win the queen, and he can then, if necessary, later on, they can finesse your jack. Okay, now, of course, your partner could put the ace up, but that again gives De Clara the king and queen. So he's got to put, put the 10 in to hope, and of course, if you happen to have the jack and nine, it's a little bit complicated, but if you had had the jack and nine, the 10 would not cost a check. But here, if it goes two of diamonds, three of diamonds, 10, can you see that when the queen wins, De Clara's nine and eight are very important. And this is what we mean by frozen. If De Clara plays diamonds, he can only make one trick. Now you can see how disastrous a club switch would be here. Okay, so a club away from the king runs straight to De Clara's queen. Okay, to be fair, you could return a spade. So you could win the second spade and return a spade, but because you know how passive a heart is, and don't forget, the key here is, eventually, eventually you will make a heart trick. Can you see that? So although it's, it's a bit, looks forlorn, but because all the suits are frozen or similar to De Clara is going to have to lead them. So if you keep leading hearts, De Clara will have to lead clubs or diamonds and I think he'll try leading clubs and if he tries leading clubs he will lose two tricks in clubs, won't he? Can you see that? Okay, so if De Clara leads clubs he will lose two tricks in the suit. Okay, for instance he leads small to the queen, it loses to the king, and your partner still got the jack and ten there. Okay, and so if you force De Clara to play the other suits, there is a chance you might defeat him. You won't always do, but there's a chance. Okay, and you certainly won't be giving any over tricks away. Okay, so it's interesting. When dummy's on your right, if there is no, so if you're sitting in the east seat, as you can see, if there's nothing in dummy at all, it's perfectly reasonable for you to switch. Now, none of the suits are particularly desirable on this one, so East would be thinking, do you know, not sure I want to switch to anything. A spade, spade might be okay. Okay, so again, East would be thinking the same thing. I would carry on with hearts, but it's much more precise. If you take the jack of spades away from the north hand, East would be thinking, oh, I, I'm gonna lead a spade as soon as I can, looking for the very weakest suit in sight. Okay. But when you are sitting in the left seat, you've got two choices. Be passive or lead through strength, but be aware of the frozen suit. Crucial that, okay? Because it's all well and good me saying dummies on your left lead through heft, okay? But you've got to try and understand this frozen suit element. You will have heard me talk about frozen suits if you've listened to me drone on for, for such a long time. I, it comes up so much in defense. Not only that, it comes up as De Clara as well. The one no trump seminars that we've done on play and defense, frozen suits in both of them, because it's a fight to avoid leading them. Okay, it's much easier, of course, to understand. As North-South, as De Clara, you can see both, car, both, both hands, so you can see that you don't want to lead diamonds. Okay, put the, put the 10 of diamonds in and you know, you, you might have a finesse on. Okay, so you've got, that's different. But without the 10 there, you can see all I've got is the queen and king. Your hope as De Clara is that the opponents lead diamonds. Okay. All right, so that is our little bit of defense today. And um, it is really difficult. The reason why I say lead through heft and when it's on your left, weaker suit in sight when it's on your right is because I'm trying to give you simple advice. And if you take that advice, 60, 60 to 70% of the time, you'll, you'll get it right, if that makes sense. So if you can't work out the frozen element, well, just go for it anyway. 
Because don't forget, it will work sometimes. Because your partner will have the remaining honours. Because you don't know if the honours are split around the table. Does that make sense? You can only see your hand and dummy. That's when a signal can be handy. Okay, if your partner's got the ace, queen, ten and another in a suit, you might need a little bit of help. Okay, or a nice little king doubleton in dummy is quite nice to lead through, isn't it? There's, there's certain holdings that are very desirable indeed. Or ace, queen, leading through an ace, queen. That's another nice holding to lead through. Okay, let's go to that hand. Wow. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry about that. One no trump from South, good. We know how, where we're starting. South has got 12 to 14 points. We, they are playing the weak no trump. Two clubs is stamen. So I'm hoping we're happy with that. And two spades is showing four spades. What on earth does three hearts show? Now the important thing in an auction like this is to work out, sometimes you might work out that a bid cannot be natural okay so it's not a jump bid so it shouldn't be a splinter someone's suggesting that so it's just a, if you are bidding stamen and your partner bids two spades why on earth would you bid three hearts so someone's suggesting it's five five hearts on four spades it it might seem as it might but you don't need to show your hearts. You've got a spade fit. So if you've got an ordinary hand with five hearts and four spades, you can just bid four spades or you can par. You've already found your fit. You do not need to bid a natural hearts. So why would you bid three hearts? Well, surely I suppose you could have five or six hearts and, and no length in spades. No, you can't have that, okay? You can't have that because you would have bid a transfer. Okay, now a couple of people know what it means, Brian and, and um, Mr. Barrow. Uh, I think that might be Steve, but I'm not sure. Um, it is a bid that you may not have come across. Okay, but three hearts is not is what we call an impossible natural bid. There is no possible reason for having it as a natural bid. Because if you found a spade fit, well, you want to play in spades. So you just bid spades. You show your support for spades. And if you only had hearts in your hand, five or more, you would have transferred. Can you see that? So if you had six hearts and not many spades, you would have transferred and not bid stamen. Can you see that? So this is tricky. And if you haven't come across it, there's no reason why you should know it. But three hearts is actually saying, partner, Let's try for a slam, because actually it's not easy to try for a slam. When partner agree, bids spades and you like his spades, I'll tell you what North's got. North's got about 17 points. And with 17 points and, and, and a fit in spades, it's not unreasonable to think a slam might be on. And what you're trying to say is the three heart bid is saying, partner, I think they might, because other, what are your options otherwise? Four spades it ends the auction. Four no trumps is two committal. You know, what three heart says is partner, if you've got a nice hand, so maybe a, a maximum hand with, with, with some controls, let's try for slam. If not, just bid spades. So three spades or four spades or whatever. So tricky, but take yourself through it. The idea is, is that three hearts can't be a natural bid. So again, Sheila is saying five spades and four hearts, and that's completely reasonable. But we don't need that three heart bid to be natural because we've already got a spade fit. So we want to play in spades. So what North is doing is he's saying, I want to play in spades, partner. If you think there's a chance for slam, let's go for it. Okay, after that, I'm hoping it's, it's more straightforward. I'm not sorry, straightforward's the wrong word. Four clubs is a cubit saying, partner, yes, I quite like the idea. So let's look at the two hands. Okay. One no trump, normal, 13 points. Remember, you don't need to stop in every seat. North has a lovely hand 17 points okay okay 17 points so just bid stamen just to see if they've got a fit if we haven't got a fit so, sorry caroline absolutely caroline saying do you have to alert the three hearts the answer is yes you do okay you do if if you're playing it like this in theory it has to be alertable okay so it goes one no trump two clumps 
two spades from south, what do you bid? So let's imagine you don't know about this three heart bid. When south bids two spades, what do you bid with the north hand? Okay. And Sue asks a good question. Does three hearts show a control? The answer is no, it doesn't. Because three clubs and three diamonds are natural bids in this auction. They can be natural. Three hearts cannot be natural. So the three heart bid could be on, on not a control in hearts. Okay. So it would go three hearts, four clubs, and you'd carry on cue bidding. Okay. Three hearts is a difficult bid. But what it, what it says is, partner, we have a spade fit. And if there's a chance of a slam, let's find it. I would expect 95% of club players to finish in four spades on this hand. Okay, because it is very, very difficult to try to find a slam. Three hearts says, oh, they'd gamble on, they might gamble on a slam. But really, you should only be in a slam if South has a suitable hand. And South has a gorgeous hand here. He has all four high cards are important. Two aces and two very key trump um, can, uh, trump cards. Remember, Stamen, if, I, if the auction is someone asking about three diamonds, if the auction went one no trump, two clubs, two spades, three diamonds, three diamonds is a natural bid. Does not show support for spades. So if I had four cards in hearts and six diamonds in my hand, I would bid Stamen, hope we had a fit in hearts, and if we don't, I can rebid three diamonds. Partner will know I'm short in two suits there, and might we might find a better contract. So again, remember, if you open two clubs, sorry, if you respond to club stamen and then rebid three diamonds or three clubs, that is a completely natural bid. It does not show support for spades. Here, three heart is an is what's called an impossible bid. Okay, it's an impossible bid. It does not show a control in hearts. Okay, so for example, if North had the same hand with King Queen Jack of Diamonds and King Queen Jack of Clubs, okay, then he might bid three hearts still. Three hearts is the only bid he has available to try for slam. Okay, so it's not easy, okay, but that's the only bid he has available. Okay. If you bid four no trumps, you might North needs a club control. Thank you. I think Will has just come up with that. North needs a club control. So when North bids three hearts, when South, with a gorgeous hand, bids four clubs, which now is a cubit, then North is excited. He's got control of every suit now and can bid Blackwood, and that's what he does. Okay, really, really tough auction. Okay, well done if you identified the three heart bid there. Do not worry if you didn't. Most of you would not have come across it. But as you can see, it's it's a very good contract, isn't it? Okay, there's only 11 tricks there in No Trumps, so you do need to be in six spades. It's no good. Okay. Okay, someone's saying it's a big gamble. What, what th Three Hearts says is, says, South, are you suitable? So if South's hands are kings, queens, and jacks, South should not go for the slam. South needs to have the aces and kings, okay? Here, every single card South has is gold dust. So South gets excited. Most of the time, South will probably just bid three spades and will finish in four spades. Okay, but South cards are absolute gorgeousness. Okay, and that's what's crucial here. So it's South's job over three hearts to decide, am I just going to bid three spades or am I going to bid something else? Okay, so again, North again with 17 points won't try for some. So someone's suggesting, oh, it's lucky. It's not. North knows that he's, all of his cards are working. So he, all he's doing is asking the question of South. If South had the Queen Jack of Clubs, for instance, in this one, well, he wouldn't. He, if so, South had Queen Jack of Clubs instead of the Ace, he is a minimum. He is not suitable. He would not cube it in diamonds. He would actually just bid three spades, and that would we'd finish in four spades. Not only that, we'd end up missing a club control, but that's another matter. Okay, so I don't. Th I think it's just good bidding. Okay, now you don't have to bid like that, you can just finish in four spades. But when slam is relatively cold like this, you know, so when dummy comes down, you're going to think, ah, oh, yeah, maybe we should have been in 12. So when that, when you get that feeling, there'll be other times where you end up making 12 because two finesses work. There's no finesses here. All you need is a 3-2 break in diamonds. Okay, that's all you need. Okay. 
Remember again, someone saying about the King Clubs could be the King Clubs, but if you haven't got, South has three key cards in his hand. Three key cards. That's why he's excited about the slam. Anyway, um, these, these hands are interesting. Really, the most important about, thing about that one was the three heart bid. And for some of you, it will come as completely blowing your mind stuff. Just throw it back in the bin is probably the answer. But for some of you regular players, think about it. Uh, it's not something that will come off, come up. You know, it might come up once in your lifetime. It's basically what we call an impossible bid. If your partner ever bids an impossible bid, okay, um, uh, then you've got to try and work out what he's got. And usually you should hope you trust him and you hope he's got a wonderful hand. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, sorry. Someone said they can only see 11 tricks. Penny, you're absolutely right. If you're playing in no trumps, but one rough is an extra trick, isn't it? So you've got 11 tricks and a heart rough, and that's why you finish in six spades, okay? So the roughing the third heart, okay, is your, is your extra trick there, okay? So there's 11 tricks, four diamonds, four spades, ace, king, and an ace, and it's the rough that's key. Okay, so let's show you the bidding quiz, if I can find it, there we go, as he ducks his head down. Here's the bidding quiz. <coughs> Another interesting one, actually. Uh, you haven't bid yet, and everybody else has had a go. So one heart from left opponent, one spade from partner, one no trump. One heart, one spade, one no trump. And it's your bid. One heart, one spade, one no trump, and it's your bid. And as usual, you can see the answers to that on the website, whether you're a member or not. So please, uh, please do have a look at that. And uh, sometimes the, those kind of questions are slightly difficult because they, they're easy to confuse with other, uh, with other kinds of hands. So good luck with that one. Love all, I should say. Notice in the top right hand corner. OK, don't forget we're not with you next Monday. Uh, that's Easter bank holiday. Um, and so we will hopefully see you in a couple of weeks. Hopefully have a nice time. Those of you on the, on the website, don't forget we are on the Fridays. We're talking about transfers and transfer breaks. Transfers and transfer breaks. So we're starting nice and straightforward with the transfers and then moving on to the breaks on our Friday lives. So thanks for that. Don't forget to check out our holidays as well. BNB holidays, we're getting quite excited about them now. Um, so uh, I'm off to Mallorca at the end of this month. Hopefully get a bit of warmth. Nice party that we're gonna take out there. And, uh, and then Croatia, Will, Will and Sylvia are off to Croatia uh, in May. So um, I think there's still room on that as well. So do look up that one as well. So I think it's time. I think it's time for some, what am I doing? Beginners, that's it, I've got to remember. So it's beginners time, we're, we're still inviting. We are still inviting. So uh, that's what we're gonna do. So let's have a look. So inviting game, what we're talking about is still adding points up. And I'm spending a lot of time on it because it's, it's a fundamental part. Um, so your bidding plan, of course, let's remind ourselves, find the denomination, which trump suit, or is it no trumps, and find your level. Is it just a part score, we haven't got 25, or with 25 or more, let's go for game. Now it's true to say, and I should explain this, that with 25 points you won't always make a game, but most of the time you will, and that's all we can do. We can't get quite as accurate as that. Okay. So, let's have a look. Bidding together. West has 16 high card points. He's only got one long suit. So West opens one heart. It's too strong for a no trump. Well, no, it's a balanced hand because there's n cards in every suit. Okay, but at least, sorry, at least two cards in every suit, I should say. But the key here is that you're too strong for your weak no trump. So what does East bid? What we said in response is we need 10 points to respond at the two levels. So do you remember 
the, the bid with this one is a one no trump. Six to nine points. So with the West hand, what do you do? Well, there's just about a chance for game. I've, do you know, I've, I think there's only 16 there. So I've added 17. I've missed a card out of the West hand. I'll have to change that in the replay. Can you put the Jack of Diamonds in there for me? Oh dear. Okay. So when I, I'll have to re-record this when we put it on the site, but there should be 17 points in the left hand. Uh, this is what happens when you do bridge weekends, etc. So if you are watching this as a beginner, you should really have 17 points for this bid. So imagine you had the Jack of Diamonds, the Jack of Diamonds in the West hand. Okay. So I will put that in, in the replay and I'll have to re-record this. So with the Jack of Diamonds there, you've got 17 points. With 17 points, you would add your points. You'd have 23 to 26. And of course, when you've got that, when you cover the 25 point range, uh, okay, when you cover the 25 point range, then you there's a chance for a game or there's not a chance for a game. You've got to ask your partner. And what we said is we invite games. So we bid two no trumps. And your partner then looks at his hand here You've got nine points, which is maximum, and you go for game. Okay, so one heart, one no trump, two no trump, three no trumps. If you're watching this live, just a reminder, remember, the Jack of Diamonds should really be in there, and I'll be, I'll be re-recording this to go on the website later. Okay, so let's look at another one. And again, we're thinking about this idea of trying to find your fit first, okay? or we finish in no trump. So one club from your partner, what would you respond with this hand? Your partner's bit of club, you can't see his hand. I've decided to disguise it from you. You can just about see a little bit of black there. But So generally we bid the lowest suit we can. Okay, so rather than bidding a spade here, you bid a heart. They're both four cards, as it happens, the hearts are a bit longer. So you show a heart, and the beauty of bidding one heart is that your partner can then bid one spade. Can you see that? So one club, one heart from you. If your partner doesn't like your hearts, your partner could then bid spades and you find a fit in either suit. If partner likes hearts, your partner can bid hearts. And in fact, that's what he does. Okay, so one club, one heart, two hearts. So your partner has said he likes hearts. Okay, and when we're beginners, what we do is always promise four cards there. So we'd expect partner to have four hearts. So let's add up the strength. So we've got 11 points. What has your partner got? This is tricky, isn't it? You've got to remember the tables. There's tables, tables, tables. What does two hearts show? Well, the important thing to do is to remember is he has opened the bidding, so he must have 12 points at least. And so, of course, it's about 12 to 14 points. Is there a chance for game if your partner's got 12 to 14 points? Well, if you add your 11 points to it, you've got 23 to 25. So I think it's reasonable to chance for get to, to try for game. And how do you do that? You can't just bid four hearts. If you bid four hearts, your partner might just have 12. Okay, so here we are again going to invite game. Three hearts. Partner, I can't bid four hearts. I don't know whether we've got the 25 points we need to make a game. Can you look at your hand again and see whether you are minimum or maximum? So let's see what he's got. Okay. So here, um, just 12 points. He's got, he's got a, you've got a nice five card suit, but just 12 points. Um, and so we bid just pass. Okay, now I haven't shown you many passes. Most of them we've made our way to game. But on this occasion, West actually passes because he is minimum. Again, of course, You've got to remember what you've shown, and that's crucial. Now, what we're doing is looking at hands from both sides. But the idea is if you focus on your own hand, West focuses on the fact that he opened the bidding. If he's opened the bidding, he must have 12 points. Well, you can see the 12 points in front of you. Can you see that? So it's up to East to bid game if they can make game. 
But of course, East hasn't got 13. East hasn't got 13, so therefore knows that he needs more from partner. Okay. For those intermediate players out there, it's an interesting hand because if you've ever done something called counting losers, which is something that the beginners will come across later, okay, as, as, as you go into the improver phase, this hand is a little bit more difficult. Uh, so the nice thing is this is hand is nice and easy for us beginners because we can just add up the points and decide not to go for game. And as you'll see, you'll lose the ace and king of spades and the ace and king of diamonds, won't you? Okay. Uh, as John points out, it's a little bit trickier if you count your losers. Okay. So if you do count your losers, okay, again, this is to intermediate players, be aware of the double doubleton. Okay, the double doubleton is always a problem, okay, because you'll often overvalue your hand. What do I mean by a double doubleton? Well, I hope you can work it out. Two doubletons, two suits with two cards in. Because we love singletons, don't we? Imagine you move the four of diamonds into the spade suit, or the seven of spades into the diamond suit. Can you see that? Okay, so if the diamonds, if, if the four of diamonds was in spades, or the seven of spades was in diamonds, you'd have a singleton, and we love singletons. And suddenly we'd be bidding four hearts with the same number of strength, because we said when we've got distribution, we can get excited. So if you've got a singleton, your hand's better. Losing trick count can't tell. So those of you who've ever used the losing trick count, that's one of its problems. Anyway, <coughs> I hope you enjoyed that. Sorry for that first hand. As I say, I'll, I'll have to re-record it for um, the purposes of putting it on our website. Our website, of course, is set up to have the beginner's software on for this is for beginners I should say for the beginner software and it will have a series of beginners tips running alongside that software uh, and if you are interested uh, it is $4.99 per month if you're interested in becoming a beginner's member but of course you don't have to you can just go on a trial for seven days see if you fancy it and then sign up at the end Anyway, thanks for your time. Hope you enjoyed that. Have a lovely Easter uh, if I don't see you before. And, uh, and then see you again soon. Thank you very much.